Hey everyone, Urban Fishkeeper here and I hope you've all had a good week um, and you're enjoying the weekend. Today I'm just going to go through um, my nemesis and for those of you that have watched some of my previous videos would know that on many occasions I've made reference to the fact that I really struggle to get Infosoria going. Um, <clears throat> you know, for every 10 I try I might get one that works. So Infosoria has really been my kryptonite and I've really struggled to get Infosoria cultures going on a regular basis um, that I could use, especially when, when breeding the bedders. Um, and then in one of my, one of the videos that I posted up, um, one of our subscribers, uh, Crown Tail Better, said to me, sent me a message and said, hey, check out this video, it may help when it comes to cultivating Infosoria. So to Crown Tail Better, thank you very much for, for passing on that information to me. I had a look at that video and it was very useful and I'm basically using that method now. I can't remember who the original poster was of that video, um, so I can't take credit for this. All I've done is taken their system and I'm just passing on that information to you. Um, but, so, you know, it's basically for me to, you know, to let everybody know that, hey, I've now found something that works um, reliably uh, for me. So, let's get on to it. So, how do I get my Infosoria culture going and what method do I use? Um, this is a culture that's currently running or on the go. And I've tried to, you can have, you know, if you look at this video, I've tried to get a close-up of it to show you the Infosoria culture in it. I'm not too sure if it's going to really show up on the camera. Um, but there's a really nice culture going in here, which is ready for me to use. What I have noticed though, using this method, and, and you know, this could just be quite normal for a lot of um, Infosoria cultures, it's taken about two weeks for this culture to show well and to bloom, really bloom, where I can, you know, use quantity out of the jar. All right, so what is the method? What do you need? First of all, you need a jar, just any glass jar. Um, that you can put on the windowsill. Um, so that's what you're going to cultivate the infosoria in. I use a piece of paper towel to cover the top so don't get any dust or little things falling into it. So a piece of elastic to go around the paper towel. Uh, then the food source that I use is um, turnip. And as you can see, it's just turnip. But what I do is it's oven dried turnip. Um, and it looks a little bit like a uh, dried porcini mushroom. Uh, what I do is I just cut a turnip up into small chunks or little blocks, uh, pop it on an oven tray, put it in the oven at about 60 degrees and just leave it in there for a few hours until it's dry enough. And you know, we, if you want to know while well, is it dry, you can hear it. It sounds like, like a rattle. Um, so that's the food source. Now, I think part of the problem with my Infosoria cultures originally was that I actually wasn't getting any starter Infosoria going um, in my cultures, and therefore that's why I didn't get anything happening. So what you do is you grab a, and I just know I'm going to mess you, so let me just grab a towel, uh, put the towel over here. Uh, grab one of your sponges out of one of your really mature tanks. Preferably a tank that's got plants in it and a tank that's got snails in it. Um, if you've got a tank that's got plants and snails in it and you've got a sponge felt in it, even if it's the sponge that's inside your canister or it's the sponge that's inside a hang-on filter um, or just a, you know, a normal sponge filter that's air-driven, grab that out. Um, I've just taken one out of one of my aquariums just to show you. Um, once you've got that out, then squeeze out all the gunk that's in that sponge. And as I predicted, I'd be missing. Okay. And as you can see, that's all that gunk in the sponge. All right, so once you've squeezed that out, the next thing you need to do then is top it up with some aquarium water. And again, if possible, take it out of an established aquarium. It's got lots of plants, some snails in it, that kind of thing. 
siphon the water out there to fill it. I've just added more water to the jug out of an established aquarium. Um, so just pop that in. Right, once that's done, you need your food source. So I normally pop in two pieces. And then put a cover over it. Um, you can make this smaller, it doesn't have to be as, this big piece of paper towel. Right, pop it over. Elastic band to keep it. And that's it. Simple as that. Um, you need to put it on a windowsill um, where it gets sunlight, but you don't want direct sunlight so that it, you know that you cook the water or it starts getting a massive algae boom in it or anything. Um, but you want it um, to get direct sunlight, or you want it to get sunlight, natural sunlight. So I just pop it on the windowsill behind me, um, and this method seems to take about two weeks for it to get to this stage where it's producing infusoria that I can now feed to any really tiny fry. All right, guys, well, that's it. I just wanted to run you through my method of creating the infusoria. Um, thanks to um, us, the subscriber um, that put me onto this link. Uh, appreciate it. Um, to the original person that did use this method, um, can't remember who it was, but um, you know that's where I got it from. So this is the method I now use, and I thought I'd just pass it on to to you guys. Uh, coming up, there's a couple of things that I probably want to share with you. Um, I'll probably just do an update on how the better rearing is going um, in the grout tank. Those are looking really good, so. I might share some of that with you. The other thing is I still need to share my main aquarium which is in the in the main section of the house and that's a 950 litre aquarium and that's just got some discus in it and some uh, stir by quarries in it. It's not a planted aquarium, it's got a bunch of plants in the center. Um, uh, it, it's got a um, aqua decor background to it and the logs all over it so planting um, it's, it's not really going to work out in that aquarium as it is at the moment, but I need to make some changes. And in that tank at the moment, I've got, very interesting, I've, I've wanted to do water changes. I normally do water changes on the big discus tank, you know, at least once a week. But what happened is one pair of discus formed on the one side of the aquarium, because it's nice and big, they can do that. The aquarium is nice and big. Um, and they've started laying and... Um, the, the fry have hatched successfully and attached to the parents, but in an in aquarium with other fish, um, the fry and also the side of the aqua decor background, it's got gaps on the side which the water then runs to the intakes of the filters, the canister filters. Um, they just get sucked in there or disappear in there. Um, <clears throat> but what's been happening is the one pair starts and they get to regulars and then I've got another pair that is now formed that have taken the other side of the aquarium so you've got one pair on the right one pair on the left and then in the middle you've got another six discus that basically hang around the middle section um, and they've both become really good parents but the challenge has been then is that I've just left them but it means I haven't done a water change in that aquarium now for probably going on to four weeks um, and strangely enough, the fish look healthier to me or in really good condition um, than when I was doing a water change every week. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on there and you know whether you know you can do too many water changes. Um, and that's something else that I'll 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 have a discussion about is water changes, because you know, do we need to do as many as we do? Um, and I've slowed down on some of mine and you know, I think I'm getting better results in certain areas. Anyway, so that's one of the things we're going to do is have a look at that big tank um, in the coming weeks. And then I'll give you an update on the betters as well. Um, it's probably time for me to do another uh, build project. So I'll have a look at what I want to do in that space. 
And then also there's, it's probably, you know, at some stage I need to show you what else is in this room. Um, there's some ant colonies and there's some green tree pythons here. Um, and some of you may be interested in seeing some of that. Anyway, guys, um, have a wonderful week ahead. Uh, stay safe, look after yourselves. Um, till the next video, Urban Fish Keeper out.